So I'm, I'm going to give some information. Uh, thank you. Somebody activated uh, the recording, uh, which is, is useful. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to give a, a, an introduction of this master's program. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions or anything you want to know about the program, um, you can uh, ask me uh, either in the chat or uh, in uh, you can send me email uh, later. Uh, I'm going to give all this information out. And, uh, you know, anything you want to, to talk to me, uh, I'm here to, 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 to answer questions. So, so, so basically, uh, this uh, master's program is... Um, uh, a master's program on data science and information technology and it's being administered, it's being offered uh, by three top research institutions in Greece, uh, the University of Athens, um, which is the biggest and oldest university in, um, in Greece, and um, two great research centers, the Biomedical Research Foundation of the Academy of Athens, which is uh, a bio-research uh, uh, institution, and the research center and the Athena Research Center, which is the biggest uh, research uh, center in Greece, um, and uh, is uh, doing uh, when people in um, the Athena Research Center are doing work uh, in all uh, aspects of, of uh, all subjects of uh, computer science, uh, with a special focus on uh, data. You know, data bases, data science, uh, um, data mining, uh, machine learning everything that has to do with um, uh, with data, but they are also doing work on other areas as well. Um, so, so the master's, this master's is um, basically was conceived um, as a focused uh, master, uh, which uh, combines, you know, the strong um, uh, advantages of these institutions. Um, the master's actually has two specific um, specializations. One is a specialization of data, big data in AI, um, the other is in bioinformatics. Um, just a quick overview of the master's program in terms of the mechanics of the program, it's a fairly standard uh, program. Uh, it's, a, it's designed uh, to be completed in uh, three semesters. Uh, and, um, you know, there is a max uh, time limitation of uh, six semesters, which is twice as much. Uh, but of course, you are not um, encouraged to do that. Uh, and uh, students have to complete 10 courses and um, a master thesis. Uh, the tuition is, uh, you know, 900 euros per semester for three semesters. And you can find all this information in the site, the website, uh, dsit.di.ua.gr. And uh, or send email to me directly, dg at di.ua.gr. I'm the director of the program. Uh, or you can send email to the administrative assistant, uh, kcanavu at uh, di.ua.gr. So any questions you may have, um, you can you can send uh, send email. So in terms of the the kind of the structure of the program, it's, it's a traditional uh, master's program, uh, three semesters, uh, but it is focused. It is focused on two specific uh, uh, specializations. Um, now, um, let, let me spend a little time uh, describing why this is a good program. I mean, this, this program is, uh, is not, uh, it, it's a relatively new program. Uh, but uh, it has been running for a few years, and actually, the, so, so we know how it runs, we know it runs well, and not only that, but it has proven to be one of the most popular uh, and most sought-after master's programs in, in, in Greece. Um, it's uh, entirely, the, the instruction is entirely uh, done in English, uh, and uh, uh, as I said, uh, it's it's not a general uh, master's program. It, it is focused on these two specific areas. And um, now you see it, it's not entirely, it, it, it is designed like that because of the collaborations that we are having. So it's a collaboration with the University of Athens, as I said, which is a very uh, strong uh, computer science department with the Athena Research Center 
And this collaboration is the foundation for the big data and artificial intelligence track uh, or specialization of the program. And um, the collaboration of um, the department with the Biomedical Research Foundation, uh, this is the foundation of the second track of the problem, the bioinformatics. Uh, now, um, I would like to say that uh, this is relatively, it's, it's uh, one of the big advantages of the, of the program is that uh, it has small classes and uh, it has uh, uh, small classes and uh, it's, very, it's quite selective. Um, so we don't necessarily look for people that have a background exactly on these topics. Um, on uh, big data, for example, or by informatics, but it is the the, the masters is selected, um, and uh, uh, and um, it, it, so I'm just checking at some uh, messages that I'm getting. Um, so the, the, the we're getting uh, we're we're looking for people that have good background of computer science or um, related. Um, uh, areas uh, now um, another so so this is this is it's a selective role it has small class classes basically 20 students go um, in each one of the two uh, tracks the two specializations these tracks are distinct uh, but you can actually share they, they, you can take uh, uh, classes from the from another track so you may be in the bioinformatics track but if you find um, a nice uh, um, a nice course, say, in machine learning or, 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 or data mining or, or something or databases and in, in, uh, in the big data track, you can take it. Uh, and vice versa, you can be um, uh, in the big data track and you can take a course that you like in the bioinformatics uh, track. Um, now, the other thing is that uh, because of this collaboration, um, the students uh gets to work with uh, uh in advanced topics i mean they can do research really and uh one of the things that uh, fosters this uh collaboration is that uh, it's a, there is a mandatory thesis for the uh, uh for the masters so you're doing a thesis um so you may as well you know exploit you know all this um uh, access that you have to to to, to researchers and uh, institutes or, or uh, in, in actually focused uh, institutes uh, all and in addition to University of Athens and you can do a thesis in fact many of our students after graduating with a master's continue with the PhD track um, uh, but in general you know the students that graduate they have no trouble actually finding a job or, or continuing for a PhD track so, so most of the classes are being taught uh, by faculty or researchers in one of these three institutes. Um, okay, so about a couple of things about the application process. If you want to ask any questions, you can just uh, stop me or you can just send a chat message. Um, the application process is actually is, uh, has already started. Um, the application deadline is, I think, May 30. Um, and um, after the deadline, you know, usually we have we announce you know who we're going to accept within a few weeks typically four weeks it's important to note that uh, um, uh, you need the bachelor's degree in a related field not necessarily computer science but you know engineering is fine uh, bio is fine uh, uh, if you're having a degree in physics uh, that would be okay but you may actually be for, uh, required to take a couple of additional courses in computer science um, and you also need to give proof of competency in English because all the instruction is in English um, just go to this website uh, if you have any, any information about the uh, application uh, just a couple of things about what uh, we're working on just so I'm gonna give you um, for example, in the in the uh, in the data science part, you know, this is one example. You know, we're doing a lot of uh, one of the many faculty that are teaching. You know, they're working on uh, smart cities. They're working on web or text mining, social networks, um, all kinds of um, uh, topics on that side. Um, on the other side, you know, people that are. Uh, 
uh, going to the uh, bioinformatics track, um, you know, they have uh, uh, there are faculty or, or researchers that are working on several uh, machine learning for system biology, bioinformatics, bioimage analysis, uh, vision, uh, uh, again, machine learning or signal processing or uh, uh, vision for, uh, for uh, um, health uh, data uh, and so on. Um, there is also, if you, if you are looking at more information, for more information for that track, um, you can, there is a, the email of uh, Professor Elias Manolakos, who is uh, the, the person who is managing the bioinformatics track. Um, if you are looking for information uh, for the data science track, you can just um, uh, email me. Um, uh, and, um, you know, of course, I will um, uh, respond. Um, so, so this is basically a uh, few things that I wanted to talk about uh, this master's. Uh, if you want to have uh, you have any, any any kind of questions, or if you want to have any uh, more generic questions about the program, you know how to study in Greece and so on, um, you can just uh, uh, you can either speak up um, or you can uh, put your questions in in the uh, in the chat and in the a uh, few minutes that we still have in this webinar, uh, I am going to do my best to basically answer your, your, your questions. So, yeah, please, if you have questions, please let me uh, let me know. I'll just put here the my email and the uh, the website for the for the program that um, you know has most uh, information there, and then uh, we can we can go for there. Um, Okay, so have any more questions? Please, please ask. Uh, uh, ask me now. Okay, I see somebody uh, saying thank you. Uh, Anything else you would like to ask? I mean, are you are you if somebody is interested uh, in coming to what are the fees? Uh, as I said, the fees are nine hundred euros per semester for three semesters. Uh, you can, and there are people that have finished the program in two semesters. Um, it is allowed, but it is a lot of work to do it in two semesters. Uh, but it can be done. So, so you can you can do it in two, uh, but the, really the, the 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 program is designed to be uh, completed in, in in three semesters. Okay. Uh, any, have any other questions? Yes. Uh, yes, ma bachelor in math uh, is acceptable. Uh, I mean, uh, it especially you know there are many math departments that actually do a lot of. Uh, uh, you can you can take a lot of classes in um, in, in computer science or informatics. Um, typically, what we do is, if you have the background but you are missing some kind of uh, uh, some some knowledge, um, we may ask uh, uh, ask the student to take uh, additional, typically a small number, a few maybe two uh, additional upper level undergraduate courses um, to to complete uh, their um, uh, their knowledge um, if you're a math student um, if you don't have uh, programming experience then it is difficult to to do it and it's also difficult to gain this experience in a couple of uh, uh, courses but if you typically, because typically math students do have programming experience, so they know how to program and so on, um, typically you may have to take uh, one or two uh, courses either in theory 
uh, or in machine learning or in a related field that you may have not uh, seen, but it is useful as a background for the masters. Uh, so, so math. So there are students with math background that have uh, uh, that have successfully kind of completed the uh, the, the, the the program. Okay. Um, I guess uh, sort of the end of the uh, of our of our time. Um, again, if you have any any other questions, you know, just let me know. Uh, I think this has been uh, recorded. I saw somebody some some message there saying uh, recording started. Uh, hopefully, this has been recorded. Uh, but in any case, the the I think the slides will be available uh, for the webinar from the webinar. Um, all right. So I thank you all for. Uh, uh, for, 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 for coming and uh, for, for, for listening to the presentation. Um, and we really, I really hope to see some of you from up close, uh, not just through the, the web interface, right? the, uh, the webinar interface here. Um, and hopefully, you know, from next semester, um, the we will be back to normal and uh, there won't be any kind of uh, pandemic restrictions and you know classes will be done uh, face to face in the real uh, uh, labs and real um, classrooms and and with real contact between uh, students and and, uh, and and teachers uh, which is something we are kind of uh, looking forward to uh, okay, so I hope to see you from uh, in Athens. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you all. I'm Professor Fatini Pazartsis of the uh, Law Faculty of the National and Cappadocian University of Athens. And in the few minutes I have uh, to be with you, I will be presenting uh, our LLM our master's degree in international and European law, which is offered uh, by the law faculty in the University of Athens. This is an English speaking program. An English speaking program, an in-depth and intensive one year program, um, which seeks to provide in-depth theoretical and practical training in international and uh, uh, European Union law. Uh, within the faculty, we've had a very successful uh, LLM uh, program in international and European law uh, for the past 10 years at least. Um, at some point, it became an English-speaking. Everything is taught in English. So uh, this is an English-speaking program. It's an intensive one-year program, and it leads to an LLM, a postgraduate degree, an LLM um, in, with two specializations, in fact, uh, public international law or uh, European uh, Union law. Uh, you know that the Athens Law Faculty is one of the oldest um, faculties belonging to the oldest university uh, in Greece. Um, the law school has a very long tradition of high standard quality education, uh, and it offers a, a, a legal background uh, both for professional or research-oriented uh, activities. So the faculty, and now in particular, you know, the faculty which uh, those of us who teach, in particular,
public international law and EU law. We're a team of um, professors. We also have guest lecturers attending uh, during the year, uh, coming to attend, coming to give lectures, both in public international uh, law and European law. And we build on strong links that we've already established with, uh, throughout the years with uh, the international and European uh, institutions, uh, academic uh, institutions uh, all over the world, and the legal and dip diplomatic uh, professions. Uh, our faculty, and as, our, as is our university, is also part of the KIVIS. Uh, it's an li alliance of some of the most famous uh, European, university, European universities. Uh, you can see it on the bottom of this screen, uh, Ex Marseille, uh, Bucharest, uh, Université Libre de Bruxelles, Universita Autonoma di Madrid, Sapienza, Stockholm, Tübingen, uh, Glasgow, and there's a smaller one I can't uh, see. Yes, Salzburg, with it, which has joined us uh, very recently. So uh, the program itself, as I said before, it has two strands, two main strands, two specializations. Uh, it's, uh, and of course, the whole program is divided into two semesters, a winter and a spring semester. In each semester, as you can see uh, before you as well, students are offered two uh, core uh, courses um, and, and two uh, uh, seminars as well, which are also obligatory, uh, and uh, then three options from a wide variety of optional modules offered both in the winter and in uh, the spring semester, students can choose uh, three optional modules in each uh, semester. From the list of the modules you can see here, um, both on the left and on the right of the strands on my screen, um, they can choose from, you know, according to areas of interest, uh, according to topics they want to further, um, uh, further specialize in or acquire further knowledge in. So each strand, uh, I repeat, consists of uh, core and optional mo modules. We also have interactive seminars. Some of the optional mo modules are offered in the form, take the form of interactive seminars. And of course, focus areas, as you can see uh, in uh, the slide uh, before you. Uh, if you have any questions, by the way, please um, don't hesitate to uh, use the chat bot box fun function uh, or to um, or to raise your hand if if you want to uh, ask a question. So uh, why, why did I say it, it's a tailor-made program? Because actually, especially through the optional courses, students can tailor their studies according to their areas of interest. And this is across the board, both through public international and European Union law, through the choice of optional courses. So um, students, of course, can be free uh, to choose um, to just generally choose any subjects which they might think uh, are of interest to them, but they can also, if they choose three out of four subjects per semester from a same area, either public international law or private international law, then they acquire an additional specialization. So, you know, it's, it's, it's basically one program, but which has, as I said, two strands, two specializations, uh, both inter public international uh, law and EU law. So, for example, in, in both strands, a student could follow courses that have to do with uh, human rights law in, on an international, um, in international law or in EU law. Um, subjects, uh, uh, modules on uh, the law of the sea, for example. Uh, diplomatic and consular law, in, which is offered in the first semester, and then combine it, perhaps, with a, uh, an interesting seminar on diplomacy, which is taught by expert diplomats and other um, people from the field, and then combine those two areas. Uh, or if, they, if a student wants to do basically focus on environment or energy law, 
There's a uh, um, optional modules fall, uh, uh, offered both within the public international law strand and the European, uh, the EU law strand. So uh, the same goes for economic law, where you see um, aspects of econo international economic law offered by the public international law specialization, and then uh, students can combine this with optional modules offered from uh, the e, um, from EU uh, economic law. So this gives a, a further possibility for students once they decide on one of the two specializations they wish to follow and apply for that, either public international law or uh, European Union law, to then uh, tailor according to their specificities, according to their interests, to tailor their program through, um, through uh, this variety of optional modules uh, from which uh, students can, can choose. So we also have many activities beyond, as we say, beyond the classroom. Um, we, our faculty and um, students also, including students from our LLM uh, program, uh, participate uh, in uh, international moot uh, competitions or other international competitions as part of teams representing the Athens uh, law faculty. The, uh, through our program and with our ties with the Athens Public International Law Center of the Law Faculty, uh, which I will talk about perhaps a little later, just for a few seconds, uh, there are also law clinics, which uh, graduate students can participate in. And we do hold also, apart from the main curriculum, very often we hold research discussion groups where students are encouraged, uh, especially LLM students, to present their um, uh, to present their their work in progress, to present uh, academic uh, papers that they're that they are preparing uh, for their coursework, and to get feedback from um, their fellow students and from colleagues and from their professor pr professors. Excuse me. And finally, of course, we also through this program. Uh, students can um, uh, seek to apply for internships uh, in uh, international organizations, uh, in domestic institutions, domestic courts, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, for example, here, uh, uh, or NGOs and any other institutions uh, that students might be um, interested in. Uh, so this gives you know, a, an opportunity to engage, and that that's what we're looking for uh, through this uh, through this program, as well as through all of the activities of the Athens Public International Law Center, uh, an opportunity to engage among young researchers, among students, uh, and to you know directly engage with members of the faculty, with PhD uh, candidates with previous graduates of the LLM and to, to have a forum of discussion, which we think is quite interesting and important um, as, as something that accompanies uh, the specific academic work that uh, students would have to, will have to do uh, to complete uh, the program. Now for some technical um, um, aspects, um, the admission requirements, well, with the, basically, uh, you would need to have any prospective students would need to have a degree in law um, from any uh, academic uh, university institution. Um, exceptionally, uh, the steering committee can accept degrees in fields other than law, but this uh, is really subject to... Um, uh, it, it's subject to, it's provi provided that at least uh, some of the courses a student has uh, uh, followed uh, in his previous studies are related to either public international law or EU law. Um, students should have a proven a proficiency um, naturally in, uh, in uh, the English uh, language. Uh, which can be uh, demonstrated by uh, uh, internationally recognized tests. 
And I have to say that this procedure, I, I mean, the, the admission procedure process in itself uh, is based on an interview. Uh, so the selection procedure is based on an assessment of the applications that we receive and uh, a personal interview, uh, which can be held uh, online as well with the admissions committee. Uh, so candidates which would uh, meet the admission requirements that we look into uh, beforehand uh, are invited to the interview. Um, let me say that the tuition fees uh, for the year, I said again, this is a, a full intensive year program. It ends with a, uh, with the submission of a master's, um, an LLM a dissertation. Uh, which is usually due by the end of September of the following year, and uh, which is presented orally uh, in, um, uh, again to a, uh, to a committee. The tuition fees are 4,800 euros, and this is per a year for the whole program. And I have to say that scholarships uh, are available, so um, students can uh, apply uh, for a scholarship, and then uh, some, uh, if they meet the requirements, uh, they, um, they, per, they they might be eligible uh, for a scholarship uh, for which would cover part of the tuition. Let me just say that you can find most of our um, most of the details uh, on for this program. If you visit our website, which you see here uh, on this um, screen uh, on the top, uh, LLM Interaeral Law UOAGR, you can ask also uh, for um, further um, information uh, through the email of the program, which you see at the bottom line, or through contacting our contact person, um, Ms. Vutinu. So um, for any questions you might have, because I don't see any questions right now on the chat at this point, uh, if, you if you have any questions, you can send those um, later on uh, if you say review or see or watch uh, this video or think about it, this presentation. Uh, to the right of the screen, this is the building of the Athens Law Faculty located in the center of Athens. Uh, which um, where most of the classes of the uh, LLM are held. Also there, we have our under, undergraduate classes as well. And to the left, um, our um, library, the law library, uh, with it, its beautiful entrance, which is located very near uh, the law uh, faculty. And um, finally, as I was saying, we uh, work closely, most of us uh, uh, colleagues who teach the LLM program in international and European law uh, are also part and fellows of the Athens Public International Law Center of the law faculty. You can contact us as there as well and also subscribe, join if you want to follow our events. Uh, at uh, the, uh, the um, going to the website, which you will see um, on the screen. And you are, of course, very welcome to contact either me. Uh, I repeat, I'm Professor Fatini Pizartsis of the law faculty. I teach public international law. You can also contact my colleague who was supposed to be here uh, with me this morning, but who has another engagement, unfortunately, uh, Professor uh, Maria uh, Gavunelli. Uh, and of course, all the other colleagues who you will see on the list of the professors who teach uh, this uh, program. Uh, we've had exciting years and we look forward to continuing uh, to work. Uh, we work both with uh, Greek students and also uh, with students from abroad. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, we would like to invite you to study neuroscience in Athens, Greece, uh, promising Greek hospitality or philoxenia, and a vigorous and internationally competitive Master's of Science in Neuroscience program in a country with a great tradition in the neurosciences.
Greece has over 2,500 years history in neurosciences. And as you can see here in the map of ancient Greece, it all started in Croton Magna, Grecia in southern Italy, where Alcmaeon was the first to study the anatomy of the brains and peripheral nerves. He stated that the brain is a site of sensation and cognition, and that the optic nerves are light-bearing paths to the brain. Shortly after, in Avdera, in Thrace, Democritus stated that the psyche is located in the brain. He dissected the brains of cats and made very accurate drawings of the retina. In Clazomene, Anaxagoras uh, ascertained that the center of the senses is in the brain. In Kos, uh, we all know the father of medicine, Hippocrates demystified epilepsy. Erasistratus from Chios and Herophilos from Alexandria distinguished nerves from the arteries and veins and described the cerebral, ventricles, and other neuroanatomical, uh, sorry, neuroanatomical features. And he proposed that pneuma, or spirit, passes along the nerves. Finally, the encephalocentric views were further expanded by the great Greek physicians Galen of Pergamon and Eretaos of Cappadocia in Rome in the second century AD. So today in modern Greece, uh, we have Greek neuroscientists that continue to make great contributions in neuroscience. Greek universities run 11 neuroscience-related undergraduate programs and eight postgraduate neuroscience master's programs. The Hellenic Society for Neuroscience was established in 1985 for the purpose to promote research, education, and awareness. And so the master's program is very intimately uh, uh, involved with the Hellenic Society for Neuroscience. In 1990, uh, HSFN uh, has been a member of the IBRO, the International Brain Research Organization, and since 1998, a founding member of FENS, or the Federation of European Neuroscience Society. There are 1,500 Greek neuroscientists represented by the Hellenic Society for Neuroscience today, and this involves Greek uh, neurology, psychiatry, and psychology societies as well. And there's a conference that happens every two years where all of the neuroscientists and students gather from around Greece and abroad uh, with international presence as well of guest lecturers uh, to discuss the most current neuroscience research going on globally. And these uh, dates alternate with the FENS, uh, and, uh, the FENS uh, every second year neuroscience meeting that happens in Europe. So what is the scope of the Athens International Master's Program? It's to provide high quality postgraduate education at the Master's of Science level in the scientific field of neuroscience. So uh, this program is coordinated by the University of Athens as well as the research institutes located in Athens. This includes the Department of Biology, the Department of Nursing, Department of Dentistry, and the School of Medicine at the National Encopodistrian University of Athens. And also the research institutes, including Biomedical Research Foundation of the Academy of Athens, the National Center for Scientific Research, Demokritos, Hellenic Pasteur Institute, the Biomedical Sciences Research Center, Alexander Fleming, and the National Research Foundation. In terms of lectures, uh, the program includes lectures from professors of the Greek and foreign university departments, as well as researchers of Greek and foreign research institutes and emeritus professors. So now in regards to the program of studies and the specific courses that are included in the program, in the first semester, uh, there are compulsory courses uh, that total uh, ECTS of 30 units. So these include developmental neuroscience, gross and microscopic anatomy of the nervous system, cellular and molecular neuroscience, technical courses, and research training uh, in a lab rotation, which I'll mention a few more details shortly. In the second semester, there are the elective courses, including neurobiological basis of diseases of the nervous system, neuropharmacology, behavioral neuroscience in animals, neuroimmunology, neuroendocrinology, electrophysiology, computational neuroscience, as well as uh, the uh, compulsory research training exercise, or what we refer to as the lab rotation. So there are two lab rotations in total. And the student should choose the courses to accumulate 30 ECTS credits uh, during the second semester. Finally, in the third and fourth semester, there's the compulsory course, which is 
a research thesis project which totals ECTS credits of 60 and so we get a total of 120 uh, between the two years of study or the four semesters. And so regarding the rotation that I mentioned, we have a duration of each research training exercise, which is eight weeks, and this corresponds to 12 ECTS credits. The students have the obligation of presenting two scientific papers or one paper presentation and one presentation pertaining to their assigned scientific project in the receiving lab. In, in regards to the research thesis project, this is an 11th month research project uh, that will take place in one of the affiliated uh, research labs, either at the research institute or at the university. And the students are obligated to write a scientific journal style paper and grant style proposal. So this includes a description of the research that was performed. Uh, so this is typically bench research, um, and this is according to the instruction of the journal Neuron. So this includes a title, abstract, specific aim, introduction, materials and methods, results, discussion, and bibliography, as well as a research proposal where the student will describe how they will answer a specific scientific question. The proposal will include a title, abstract, specific aims, introduction, experimental design, a bibliography, as well as a budget that will go along with the proposal. In regards to tuition fees, the tuition fees required to be, are required to be paid by the full-time students for the program amount to 1,000 euros per semester, or for e, uh, that is for EU citizens, or 1,500 euros for international students. The tuition fees required to be paid by the part-time students amount to 500 euros per semester during the first two years and 1,000 euros per semester during the third year. Now, in regards to fellowships, uh, scholarships are granted to one third of the accepted students, and one of these students is an international student for each cohort accepted. Eligibility is based on performance in the program, previous research experience, and authorship in scientific papers where applicable. Fellowships, so students are encouraged to seek for fellowships to support their studies, either from Greek or foreign foundations. Uh, some examples follow, including the Bodosaki Foundation, the Latis Foundation, the Levendis Foundation, Onassis Foundation, or the Stavros Niarchos Foundation. Uh, in regards to where the classes take place, so teaching takes place in classrooms located at the different university departments and research centers that are participating in the program and all of the classrooms are located in the city of Athens. So just to sum things up, uh, Athens is the perfect place to study neuroscience where you can combine high caliber neuroscience research and education along with uh, what Athens is most well known for, the warm, mild climate, the sun, the history, the archeological uh, sites and lots of sightseeing and museums the culture, the food, and of course the nightlife and the fun. So this is a perfect place to study neuroscience. Thank you very much. Dear candidates, in the University of Athens, we believe that the university's leading role shall be safeguarded by a constant engagement to innovation, creativity and excellence. We are committed to work towards the advancement of critical thinking, contribute to sustainable development and social cohesion with respect to the principles of democracy, ethics, and cultural diversity. At the same time, our mission is to invest on internationalization. We believe that especially today, internationalization is perhaps more important than ever. The challenges we face cannot be solved by one person or one nation alone, but we need to stand together. Higher education institutions increasingly adopt strategies of internationalization in order to achieve competitive advantage in both national and international markets. Curriculum constant updates are essential in order to meet the new research and technological trends and also incorporate openness, tolerance, and culturally inclusive behavior. Especially for research universities such as ours, internationalization is reflected in dealing with the impacts of 
interlinked global challenges, like for example, infectious diseases, climate change, food security, and shortage of energy. By merging our tradition with innovation, we have now developed our new medical degree program in English addressed exclusively to foreign nationals of EU and non-EU countries. Eligible applicants should have attended the final two classes of high school in a foreign country and should have obtained a high school diploma or other equivalent secondary educational diploma that entitles them to admission to higher education institutions in the country where they have graduated. The English undergraduate program in medicine of the School of Medicine of the National and Cappadocian University of Athens has the following five main educational objectives. Medical knowledge, patient care, self-evaluation and lifelong learning, professionalism, and finally communication skills. In more detail, medical knowledge. Upon their graduation, our students are expected to have acquired basic knowledge of the biomedical, clinical, clinical laboratory, technological, epidemiological, and health-related social sciences. Furthermore, it is anticipated that graduates have the capability to identify and evaluate new data, as well as emerging technologies and apply them in solving clinical problems, caring for and treating individuals and populations, conducting scientific research, and generating new knowledge. Patient care. All medical school graduates are expected to have the ability to provide patients with compassionate and palliative care, as well as to be capable of offering basic services for disease prevention and diagnosis, as well as for promoting health. Moreover, it's anticipated they, they are able to effectively collaborate with other healthcare professionals. Medical school graduates are also expected to be capable of recognizing limitations in their knowledge and clinical skills. As medical knowledge and technology are constantly evolving and they should aim to engage in lifelong learning, committing themselves to continuously advancing their knowledge and improving their skills and abilities. Moreover, all medical school graduates are expected to demonstrate high standards of professional conduct, reliability, integrity, and accountability, as well as to apply the principles of medical ethics in everyday practice. It is anticipated that graduates have developed self-awareness and are competent in identifying and handling ethical dilemmas and issues regarding their relationship with parents, patients, patients' environment, their colleagues and social society in general. Communication skills are very important. So our students following their training are expected to have developed adequate verbal, nonverbal, as well as writing communication skills and be able to build trustworthy relationships and cooperation with patients, families and colleagues. All courses are in English. However, if any of you may want, there is the possibility to learn Greek at the university's modern Greek language teaching center devoted to the teaching of modern Greek as a foreign language. The six year program spans 12 semesters with the final three spent in full-time clinical practice. To obtain your degree, you will need to successfully pass examination in 48 obligatory courses and 12 elective courses. For clinical training, students may participate in 16 hospitals in the Athens metropolitan area. It should be noted that about 40% of the medical needs of the public health system in this region, which is, has about 5 million people, are covered by our own university clinics. Under the guidance of top class faculty, students enrolled in the program will follow the same syllabus as Greek students and access the school's cutting edge facilities, including robotic patients and 3D anatomy. 
National and Cappadocian University of Athens has established 15 centers of excellence, 18 centers of expertise in rare diseases in the School of Medicine, and five research institutions. The, insti the institution has also three university hospitals, while almost a 400 clinics, departments, and university laboratories operate at the National Cappadocian University of Athens premises and in 16 Athens hospitals. It is important to note that among our alumni, there are two Nobel Prize winners, 15 former prime ministers of Greece, three former presidents, and countless notable researchers in diverse fields. The medical school has a reputation for being at the forefront of medical science. Its alumni include George Papanicolaou, a pioneer in early cancer detection and inventor of the very well-known PAP test. The university's impressive research record continues today, with our university appearing in the top 100 universities for Google Scholar citations for five consecutive years. Most recently, our university has ranked 92nd in the world, 18th in Europe, and first in Greece. Finally, data from the school's alumni network indicate that 100% of our graduates looking to work abroad secure employment. Our university is based in the vibrant Greek capital, Athens. And this has made internationalization a cornerstone of its 10-year strategic plan. And importantly, already in our university, there are 7,600 students. In September 2020, it became the first university in Greece to launch a course taught exclusively in English. Now, National and Cappadocian University of Athens has launched a medical degree tailored to English-speaking international students. We warmly invite you to visit us or follow our short video in YouTube. Thank you. Ever since I was a kid, I've dreamed of becoming a doctor, and now I'm making my dream come true in Europe. At the Athens Medical School of the National and Cappadistrian University, it was the first medical school to be established in Southeast Europe. That was in 1837, and today it stands at the forefront of medical science. Athens also happens to be one of the sunniest, safest, and most vibrant cities in Europe. So come join us for a day at the medical school. Let's look in on our robotic patients. This is Hal, and this is Hal Jr. Our professor inputs an illness, and we have an interactive lesson. Even the first-year science classes are taught in a fascinating way. But the best part is the clinical training. For the following years, we put on our white coats and attend clinics at university hospitals. Half the departments at the Athens Public Hospitals are university clinics, which means there are lots of opportunities to get clinical experience. There's so much to learn, even from the way the professor talks to the patient. The studies are demanding, but luckily, Athens is a great place to unwind after a hard day. Medicine was born in Greece, and a lot of medical terms have Greek roots. The classes, though, are all in English, and the professors teaching them are outstanding. They all do research and have published in the best medical journals, which is great for us. Actually, if you look at the faculty at top medical schools in the US, you'll see that a good number of them are graduates of the Athens Medical School. The quality of studies is high. There are more than 10,000 medical schools in the world, and the Athens Medical School ranks in the top 200. Plus, Athens Medical School is a member of CITIS, an alliance of top European universities. They say university is the best years of your life. Studying at the Athens Medical School, I know that's certainly true for me.
Hi, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Aristotle Timpas, Teli Timpas. I'm a professor at the National and Kapodistrian University of Athens at the History and Philosophy of Science program. And uh, I happen to serve as director of the master's program in Science Technology Society, Science and Technology Studies, called known as STS. STS is an established field internationally which focuses on the interaction, the relationship between science and technology and society. I'm going to say a few things about our program as, as briefly as possible, and then questions are very welcomed. Um, this graduate program is, in the, is going to be in the fifth year of its operation. Uh, it is being offered by two departments, one humanities department, the history and philosophy of science department, and one department from the sciences and more specifically the field of informatics and telecommunication, communications. And this is the department of informatics and telecommunications of the School of Science, uh, National and Kapodistrian University of Athens, a high ranking department. I believe the highest ranking computer science department in Greece. So it's the two departments offering together the program and that exemplifies what the program is all about, meaning the close interaction, the close contact, the interface between um, science and humanities approaches to science and technology. Now, our program, we're very glad that our program is already very attractive, uh, worldwide actually, if I may say. Uh, in the, we are actually, uh, right now we have students from, um, uh, 10 countries around the world um, being with us, uh, including students from the US, Japan, China, India, Brazil, the UK, Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, Spain, Italy, Norway, Israel, and Turkey. Uh, this is truly an international program. And um, I may add that um, in the list of our graduates, we have uh, in our students, we have um, graduates of some of the best, uh, highest ranking uh, departments worldwide, including students from Harvard, UCLA, Humboldt University in Germany, um, and very good uh, universities in, in, in Japan and uh, the Netherlands. Now, the purpose of the program is to train graduates who could analyze, interpret, intervene, and make recommendations on issues of relevance to science, technology, and medicine based on interdisciplinary perspectives from the human and the social sciences. Program graduates will be especially prepared to contribute critically to issues connected to informatics and telecommunication. For example, the issues that are around us connected to artificial intelligence, AI, big data, robotics, automation, the internet of things. Also the pursuit of environmental sustainability, for example, through appropriate energy and transportation technologies biology, medicine, biotechnology, and biomedicine, for example, from gene editing and stem cells to biobanking understanding of pandemics. So that's what we really focus on, uh, a systematic study, research and study and education on the important challenges, social challenges around us as they are connected to science, technology, and medicine. Our graduates are able to identify the best options and make recommendations regarding economic and social policies, for example, concerning inequality, work, social rights, gender, disability, applied ethics, ethics of science, technology, and medicine, business ethics, innovation, research and development, regulation and the law, and issues of contemporary importance, like, for example, the connection between science, technology, and migration and borders. Our program admits a maximum of 36 students per year from all fields. Students come really from all fields, 50% usually from the humanities and the social sciences, and 50% from engineering, all branches of engineering, biology, um, informatics, chemistry, physics, mathematics. Uh, to graduate, they have to successfully complete 10 courses or seven courses plus a thesis. And upon graduation, they receive a diploma from the National and Kapodistrian University of Athens, plus a certificate from our international partner, which is a consortium of university called ESST. And ESST, if you write your thesis and will be evaluated according to the standards of ESST, then you can do two diplomas, our Anglophone, our English diploma, um, actually a diploma that confirms that it's an Anglophone program, but also an additional one 
from this international ESST program. Sorry. Okay, this is the consortium. You can see the universities participate in this consortium together with us. All these are well-established and in fact leading programs around Europe and around the globe in the field of STS, Science Technology Society. And together we participate in a consortium that, um, that uh, of sharing resources, including the writing of a thesis uh, based on advisement from experts around the network. Now, an example of uh, faculty who have taught or supervised this at the program. There is a mix up between persons from the sciences, experts in the sciences, experts in the humanities and the social sciences. My colleague, Dior, Dior Larabajis, he's a graduate of Princeton University. He's teaching history and philosophy of science. Stathis Arapostathis, he, he holds a PhD degree from the University of Oxford. He teaches science, technology, policy, and law. Stavros Drakopoulos, his PhD is from Sterling University in the UK. He teaches methodology and history of economics. Kostas Gavroglu, emeritus professor. He is teaching um, uh, history of physics. He, he, his degree came from Imperial College. Georgos Gotsis, holder of two PhD degrees from Panion University and NKUA. He's teaching business ethics. Stathis have Jim Thimiadis from the informatics department, intelligent media. George Kurupetroglu, STS approaches to digital accessibility and assistive technology together with a group of very capable postdoctoral researchers from our group. Mary Leoncini from NKUA. She's a graduate from the Ecole des Autetites and Sans Social specialist in gender theory. The gender science technology relationship is the focus of our program. Stathis Psilos from King's College, the UK philosophy of science. Rusu Maria from UCL, from the informatics department, digital heritage and cultural technology. I graduated from Georgia Tech and my expertise is computing, artificial intelligence, big data and the like. And Dimitris Varoutas, who is actually the vice chair of the Greek uh, uh, regulatory Committee on, on Telecommunication, who is ex, whose expertise is on technical economic analysis of telecommunications, and he's a graduate of NKUA. And in addition to this, they have, we have a very rich, uh, um, uh, a very rich uh, uh, partnership with um, established scholars in the field. You can see the list here, and you can also see it in our website. That allows us to offer many options in the program through courses or through modules included in the courses. Um, okay. um, and also our university participates in, an, in a pan Europe, in European network, CIVIS, it's called CIVIS. And in the context of CIVIS, we are very active, actually. We are leading in offering uh, courses in green innovation, inclusive digitalization, and ethical biomedicalization, all these under the umbrella of Science Technology Society. There is a video with uh, some of our graduates describing their experiences, especially graduates coming from countries like the US, Japan, and Europe. Um, if you are interested, please email me, and, and I can point it to you. Um, the application period is May to June. There is a call of application now out. You can apply until the end of June. The fees are just symbolic. It's a thousand euros for the whole program. Uh, the program is a it's a 60 CTS program. So it runs for two semesters. Classes are taught usually Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from six to 10. So people who, who work, who have regular jobs can also attend. And this is our website. You can see it here. And of course, don't hesitate to contact me for anything that uh, I could be of help uh, with. Thank you for being here. And needless to say, I'm available to, to answer any questions that you may have.
the chat. You can type them in the chat if that's an option. Okay, it doesn't look like there are any questions. Uh, I would flatter myself to think that things are very clear. <laughs> uh, yes, the message here is that, for example, if you, if you consider an MBA degree in business administration, about the application period, yes. I, it's in the last page of my presentation. From now, May and June. So there is a call of applications out please email me and I will point it to you. You have until the end of June to submit an application. Thank you. You're very welcome. Doesn't look that, like there's any other question. Yes, I may or you know, I may just repeat myself um, and say that don't hesitate to, to contact me if you have any questions. Um, thank you for being here and for your interest in our program. Bye-bye. Hello, greetings from Athens. My name is Sofia Papaioanu and I am a professor of Latin at the National and Capodistrian University of Athens. In this webinar, I will introduce the BA program in the archaeology, history, and literature of ancient Greece, BAG. BAG is the first BA degree taught in English at the University of Athens, and it is a program that focuses exclusively on the study of ancient Greek culture from a comprehensive perspective. In this short presentation, I will try to offer answers to the three questions usually asked by prospective undergraduates considering applying to a BA in the field of the humanities. Question number one, what is the subject of this BA? Question number two, what is the content of the program? What do people study here in the four academic years required for the completion of the BA? And how this study material is organized? And question number three, why should people pursue the particular course of study? What is so special about that? Let's begin providing some answers. So what will you study once you are admitted to BAG? You will pursue the study of ancient Greek culture from a comprehensive perspective, archaeological, historical, and literary. In four academic years or eight semesters, you will explore the archaeology, art, history, literature, and thought produced in Greece, but also in the Hellenophone world of the Eastern Mediterranean, from the prehistoric era through the third century AD, the era of the so-called late antiquity. You will explore the ongoing interaction of Greek culture with other cultures of the Eastern Mediterranean, but also the reception of Greek culture by the Romans and the inventive appropriation thereof. Not least, through study in specialized seminars, you will discover the enduring legacy of the Greek antiquity in the fashioning of the European civilization's multifaceted cultural identity. 
no less important, you will be a student at the National and Capodistrian University of Athens, the oldest university of the Eastern Mediterranean, which was established back in 1837 and is consistently ranked in recent years among the top 300 universities worldwide. Bag is offered by the School of Philosophy, one of the original four schools of the Capodistrian University, and with over 8,000 attending full-time students, it is today the biggest school in the university. You will be part of a diverse international community, attending classes with students from many different countries who either are exchange students spending a semester or a year attending courses in one of the departments of the School of Philosophy, or study at the School of Modern Greek to earn accreditation. You will be taught by professors 100% of the teaching staff of BAG are PhD holders and full-time faculty either at the Department of Philology or at the Department of History and Archaeology. Also, several distinguished professors from UK and American universities who happen to be in Greece for the academic year <coughs> gladly accept our invitation to teach for a semester. No courses are taught by graduate students and teaching assistants. What is unique about BAG? You can study the culture of ancient Greece, of course, in many universities across the world. But in this program, you will live in Greece. You will feel part of Greek culture. You study of, your study of ancient Greek will be aided by or combined with the study of modern Greek, which you can practice every day. And you will acquire first-hand experience of the monuments and sites you will be studying in your courses. Imagine, you will read Plato in the morning and you can visit the place where Plato taught in the afternoon. You will study the Parthenon one day in the classroom, and a day or a week later, you can review your notes next to the Parthenon itself. Now, let's say a few words about the structure and content of BAG. The BA in ancient Greece is a four year degree, as we said students have to complete successfully 32 courses over eight semesters. This means that they attend four courses per semester. The courses are drawn from three collaborative disciplines from the field of classics, archaeology, history, and philology. For semesters one through six, all bad students have to study intensively classical Greek. No previous knowledge of the language is required. From the third semester onwards, the study of the Greek language is designed to run simultaneously with the study of Greek literature. In the first year, Students attend a number of foundation courses in the history and culture of ancient Greece. These include introductory courses to the disciplines of history and archaeology, and a survey course in translation in Greek literature. The second and third years are devoted to the systematic study of ancient Greek archaeology, history and literature, while the fourth and final year offers an array of specialized courses and seminars. BAG welcomes applicants from applications from students who wish to study for a semester or a year as exchange students and get credit here towards their degrees back home. 
let's look at some sample courses offered in the program. Starting with archaeology, you may attend courses on ancient Greek art, Greek architecture and city planning, the relationship of the Greek world to the civilizations of the Eastern Mediterranean, such as the Egyptians, the Hittites, the Persians, Greek pottery, and so on and so forth. On the history front, you will study about the Greek polis, classical Athens, of course, Alexander the Great and Hellenistic Greece, Greece and Rome, religion and sports in antiquity, Greek epigraphy, Greek coins, and their significance in the study of history. And on the philology front, starting from Homer, you will read all major works of classical antiquity, epic, tragedy, comedy, historiography, philosophy, including Plato and Aristotle, of course, oratory. You may take courses in Greek religion and myth, and also courses on the reception of Greek literature in Roman literature. Seminars on the fourth and final year may as, uh, show you how the classical heritage is transmitted across the centuries to our days. Why choose back then? Our third question, what is special about this program? By applying to BAG, first and foremost, you will receive a wide ranging education on practically every aspect of ancient Greek culture. You will be visiting in person all important archaeological sites of Greece and the museums where the antiquities discovered in these sites are kept. You will be able to participate in archaeological excavations, either one of those run by the Department of Archaeology of the Capodistrian University, or one of the digs directed by some of the foreign schools that are active all over Greece. I'm coming to the admission requirements in just a few minutes. You will have the option to study modern Greek in addition. You will live in Athens for four years during your studies, and no doubt you will travel to many places around Greece during your holidays, even your weekends. Being able to chat with local people in their language will make you feel part of the community right away. Let me also tell you that Greeks love it when foreign visitors speak their language. Above all, you will receive a first-class liberal education with emphasis on regional and avant-garde thinking. After graduation, you will be ready to apply to graduate school to continue your study of classics, philology or archaeology, or history, or apply to a professional schools. Classics majors are very much in demand at law schools in the US, for instance, or even pursue a type of a career which you cannot imagine right away. Your studies in Greece will open for you a new world and direct you in new ways of viewing the world and your role in this world. So, how to get in? In order to be admitted to BAG, you need to have an international baccalaureate or a graduate school diploma with a GPA that ranks you at the top 70% of your class. If you're not a native English speaker, you need also to provide proof of English fluency and uh, three uh, 
ways you can do it is either take the IE TOEFL exam and score 88 or above with at least 17 in listening, 17 in writing, 18 in reading, and 20 in speaking, or take the IELTS with an overall score of 6.5 or above, or at first have a first certificate in English and higher. B2 and higher um, degree. You can find more detail, much more, including information on the cost and the fees at https baag.uoa.gr. This is the website of the program. If you have uh, questions about de much detailed information that you cannot find on the website, you are very much welcome to email us at infobaguoa.gr. And if you are determined to apply, which we very much hope so, you may find an online application on the BAG website, which you can fill in. We will be delighted to hear from you in any way. Thank you very much for attending this presentation.